Well, I did it again. I am clearly having trouble getting, what am I having trouble getting? Satisfied with the way the shop looks. Uh, the layout design, stuff like that, I've changed it numerous times. I showed you how many times am I going to show you rearranging or doing different things to the shop. But it's got to be the last time because I think I may have figured it out. Have a look. Uh, yep. It's uh, not gone. It's right there. By putting that on the back wall, I now pretty much open up this wall here and move the toolbox over. There's not a lot in the toolbox because, well, I went and did something else. I moved the workbench from there to here. And then built that. Yeah, that's what I've been doing. So now, most of the tools that were on the pegboard up there, <laughs> speaking of pegboards, I started out with a 4x8 sheet of pegboard, then went down to 4x4 four four sheet. Now, well, I am uh, down to 1x4, which works fine with me. I got so much stuff in here that I just did not need, and it ended up going. But what I did do, built a couple of racks for my impact and my drill, a couple of shelves up there, shelves up there. I do not want this to get cluttered yet. I got to mount these here yet, uh, so I make them a little more accessible and neaten up and out of the way. Move my wrenches, everything over here. Trying to make the workflow a lot better. Now, I'm not 100% certain exactly what I'm going to do yet. And yes, I'm kind of all are over here. I'm going to show what you're looking at over here. I'm over here. This bench with the bandsaw is kind of cockeyed there because I got stuff in the corner. But my idea is the workflow is right here. Right? That's the workflow. So I can assemble stuff on the bench, cut stuff over there on the miter saw, and you know everything's right here in front of me. That's the idea. Now you see the welding carts in the middle? That can always be moved. I'm still thinking about turning this one sideways up against that wall there. Not sure yet. And again, oil and gas is up there. And as you see here, I bought a whole bunch more oil and gas stuff. Hobby Lobby. You cannot beat the signs that you get at Hobby Lot. Well, you can if you want to buy the originals and then you're going to get a bank loan to get them. You hear that? They just decided to cut a tree down. Anyway, Hobby Lobby is where you get the deals for the signs. That's where I got all these signs from. So now we're going to put some of them up today. And I'm hoping this is going to be the last move because... I'm getting tired of moving this stuff. Well, first up, it would appear I wasn't paying attention when I bought signs. I got a Route 66 here. Well, apparently I got a, another Route 66 here. And I can tell you what I paid for them. And they're 50% off. So, $18.99, 50% off. All these signs were 50% off when I bought them. Anyway, let's get a couple of them up on the wall here and kind of decorate this a little bit. Uh, why didn't I paint the wall? I didn't want to. No other reason. I just didn't want to. All I'm gonna put up is this uh, roots. Wood chipper. Step back, make sure that is straight. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, are already guessing that I'm going to come back in and we can move these signs around. Probably right. Let's see what's up next. What are we moving next? Moving. We're not moving anything. I really like that Chevy truck. Really like that truck. 
We got a nice mobile sign. Oh, got a couple other ones here. A Texaco. Well, apparently, I don't only did I buy two Route 66 signs. I bought two Chevy truck signs. I don't need to. Big dummy. Even the, even the turkeys are like laughing. Like <laughs> you bought two of these things. Yeah. Don't tell Jenny. She'll never let me buy another sign again. All right, let's. Get them put, you know what, I could probably give that sign away. All right, I was gonna put this one on the end wall, but I decided, no. I'm gonna put it on this side of the wall over here. There we go. So I guess uh, we'll just set that one aside for now. What do we got next? Mobile one. Put that one up there. What do you think? That look okay up? You see up there? Let me turn you up here. Turn you up. Tip you up. All right, up there. All right, that's where it's going. Two more on the top, and that one's done. Cruising 66 and 66. Well, it's the year I was born. Put that one up here. All right, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this one here down. It's the license plate off of my pop's car. I'm gonna bring that one down right over here. There. Also, I'm not sure where my dad might have got this. I'm not certain, but it says established 1957, Oakland University. Well, I'm here for the 1957 part. This guy didn't go to university. I know you couldn't tell, but this guy did not go to university. All right, here's where we are at. We've got our cruising 66 pops tag. Route 66, the other one's up there. I'm not sure those axes are not going to stay there. Got some other stuff up here. Again, I got a duplicate of this one here. I don't know whether just to give it away or put it up somewhere. Because once I take that piece down over there, that wood grain looking thing, I got all that wall right there. It's got to have something on it. Which means I got to convince her that I need to buy more signs. Shouldn't be too hard. Should it? Well, I think we've uh, freed up quite a bit of room. And like I said, I built this on Monday. I didn't film any of it. I just wanted to get it done and get it on the wall. Because I got tired of stuff being set here, set there, set on the floor, or do whatever. And again, like I said, the workflow was just wasn't there. It was just causing me some grief. And we all know I don't need grief. Nobody needs grief. So I just got it knocked out and here we are. Uh, this is going to be pretty much the way it stays. I got the wrenches, like I said. I just decided, just took this shelf out of here. Uh, it, it wasn't doing anything, just getting in the way. So the batteries are going to be charged up there. I do have to uh, drill a hole in the top up here. Run the cable through from the power bar because I'm going to plug everything in up top there so you don't see all the cords. Like I said, we need more signs. And uh, I got to find a place for the sockets. I still have the toolbox over there. Don't get me wrong. It's not going anywhere. But uh, it, like my Keurig, is on its last leg. And actually my Keurig has no legs left. But it is what it is. That is on its last leg. So I got to get another one of those. Uh, I, I'm thinking the Keurig is more important than that toolbox right now. If you know me, I drink a lot of coffee. Uh, that is going to do it for In the Shop. I gotta run out and get an oil filter for the Silverado. We gotta do an oil change on that. Uh, that's most likely gonna be tomorrow. I hope you can hear the wind blowing out there. We had a nasty storm come through last night and uh, it's up to a fair bit of rain, but not a lot, which is a good thing.
Well, it's cold outside, so welcome back. It's project day. We've got some woodworking projects we got to do. We've uh, just started on a nice little book holder here. We're going to make another serving tray. This time it's going to be a little different. Well, I hope it's going to be different. It's going to be different. We are going to make this out of simple pine. This is 1 by 8 pine. It's actually 3 quarters of an inch and not quite 8. But it's going to work for what we need. I'm going to cut 3 three and a half inch strips. This is 18 inches long. We're going to put those together. And we're going to put a border and a handle on each end. That's the plan. If you watch the last videos, you know things never go according to plan. But we're going to try and stick with this one here. All right, these three here are going to serve as our base. Wonder why I cut them. I'm going to round out the edges on the inside here so that it'll distinguish between the three panels. This one here is going to be our sides. I got to cut that down to two inches and we're going to go two inches all the way around. But the end pieces, well, we're going to do a little something different on the ends. Change of plans already. Told you. We're going to cut our sides down to inch and three quarter. Don't want them too tall. Well, that, my friends, is why you do not stand behind the table saw and you should use a push stick. Uh, don't do as I do. We're just going to leave it at that. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's why I never stand behind the table saw. All right, let's move on. No trip to emergency room yet. So here's where we are at. I did cut these a little bit longer because I want them to extend past from when we put the handle on the side here. And, uh... Those are going to be all evened up. I'm going to sand all this down before I put it together. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these two. Two. There's three. I'm going to glue these three together. Then I'm going to nail the sides on. Then I'm going to nail the end on. But right now we have to cut the handles for the end. Two handles are cut. That's going to be it for the death wheel. My intention was to shape out the bottom. Shape out the bottom. How about we cut a u-shape out of the bottom here and then run the flat stock in a hoop here a hoop that is technical carpenter terms right there we're going to run a hoop piece of flat stock when your finger moves you got to talk at the same time I i'm still learning this whole youtube gig guys flat stock Goes across here to here. And this is going to be the handle. I'm going to paint it black. I'm not sure whether I'm going to stain this. Just use a natural finish. Or burn it. I'm leaning towards burning. Again, we'll make that decision when we get to it. But right now, i got to sand all this stuff down. Get it ready for glue and nails. get the rest of these here all sanded up and I'll get right back to you this here is uh, obviously that's a book holder I told you that a bit ago but not hard to make uh, I might do a video on making one of those if you're wondering just curious about the angles here and here to make your triangle it's 22 degrees or 22 and a half degrees it doesn't really matter 22 degrees will get you done not that hard to make at all but I got everything sanded out here uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all this together and nail it at the same time 
Uh, that way it's really not going to go anywhere. And then we're going to work on the handles. Well, this has happened twice in the last two videos. I forgot to hit record. Anyway, here we are. This is our box. It is all glued together all the way around. And it is nailed together. So we're going to let that glue all dry and set up. I'm going to start working on the handles here and get them measured out. And uh, hopefully I got some steel around that I can take care of that. I got something here. I'm not certain why, but I got a piece of flat stock here. It just happens to be the same width as our board. Meant to be. Now all I got to do is be able to make a handle out of that. I decided I'm going to cut two 8-inch pieces and see if I can bend it up from there. Alright, there's our two 8-inch pieces. I got to figure out how to get a nice little arc in it. And then what I'm going to do is dress up the edges and drill my holes. And I'd like it to sit probably about that high, just enough to get your fingers under it. All right, I'm going to try and use this propane bottle to get my round. Uh, I kind of kinked in the middle there. It's actually not bad. pretty darn close Should quit messing around with it before it's way out of whack and not usable so there's our pieces they're they are really identical but what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off one inch here one inch down here put them in the vise and bend my tabs over and make sure it is straight Way too far. Way too far on a bend. That's what they make big hammers for. Let's see where we're at here. All right, we clearly have way too much bend on that. But if I bend this more in the middle, it's going to bring these down. So let's try that. All right, so after a little bit of bending, this is where we are at. I think that's going to work. All right, there we go. They are pretty much almost exact. I mean, they're as close as this guy's going to get them, and we're going to take that as a win. I'll punch the uh, punch. I'll mark the ends for the holes, we'll round out the edges, and they'll be ready for paint. Couldn't find a bigger hammer. Three more. Well, that took a little longer than I thought. I heard a whistle go off, and a whistle means coffee break, and one coffee led to two. Next thing you know, oh, never mind. All right, what we're going to do now is we are going to round off the edges of these to make them look somewhat presentable. And we're going to use this little sander right here. Alright, that's what we got. 
So right there, we're gonna have to bend these tabs back down a little bit, as you can see. This one here fits pretty good. We don't have to do any bending back on that one. Just that one right there. Now, we gotta get these things into this paint booth. And yes, in all the remodeling here, we got a paint booth. I'll show you. This is our mobile paint booth. Simple as that. I think we're gonna do this side first. This is matte black. All right, we're gonna let that dry for a bit. Maybe hit it with a second coat, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna get the top done. Beautiful. I'm gonna put the uh, small ceramic heater here. Up here to kind of help speed up the drying process a little bit. Well, here we are painted up. Not quite dry yet, but that's okay. I just want to give you an idea what it's going to look like. Similar to that. Okay, and what I thought about doing was taking some of the flat stock and putting a bracket around the end. But I don't know if that's going to be too much. I might make them and try them out and see what they look like. But if it's too much black on there, then maybe it's too much black. Or, I'm going to make them, and if I end up burning this piece, then they'll look good on there because it'll be a, enough black on the dark wood. So, we're going to let the glue set up some more. And then we got to sand down some putty. And guys, anybody can make this at home. It's not that hard. It is a square box with a floor in it. That's it. These are cut at three and a quarter. These are cut at inch and three quarter. All the way around. These are 18 inches long, and all you do is frame it. How you finish it is up to you. I don't know if I'm going to get to that tonight, or maybe I'll see you in the morning. I guess you'll find out in about a second and a half. We are back. It is the next morning, like I said, and you didn't have to wait that long, right? Just a couple seconds. Got the handles off it, and yes, the paint wasn't dry. We're going to sand it all down, figure out the finish. I'm not going to bore you with the sanding part. I'll be back to you in a second. Sanding's all done. Now we're just going to take a piece of sandpaper and we'll round off the edges a little bit, soften them up. soft so we are now at the point where we got to figure out what to do with this I decided to go with the stain hopefully it'll look okay if not well it is what it is we're gonna start by putting this on with a brush then wiping it off might be a little bit easier to work with It is. We we'll speed this up. Well, here we are. I think it turned out uh, pretty good. Got to darken up some of the glue in there. The glue squeezing out in between the panels is kind of inevitable, but I think it adds a little bit of character. If you actually get a little bit of, like this is glue here. 
this is glue here and a couple spots over here I think it adds a little bit of character to it but if it's in between and you don't darken it up it's really noticeable so we're gonna let this here dry and then maybe touch up where some of the glue is really showing through uh, that way that way it all looks like it's supposed to be turned out pretty good and I know it's not dry but I'm probably gonna put the handles on it anyways well, let's wait until it's dry. That's overrated. And there we go. I think that turned out pretty good. I don't think I'm going to put the brackets around here. I think it might be just a little too much metal. But that's it. The only thing left to do is put the bear thing on it. If she chooses to go with that route. She likes the... Uh, Jen likes the dull look. I mean... It's not protected. You spill something on it. Um, you know, it's going to soak into the wood because this is just a stain. It's not a protection. So, so we'll probably do the bare thing. Well, that's going to do it for today's video. The first couple of projects in the new shop. New design, not new shop. Okay, don't want to speak out of turn here. You guys will call me out in the comments. Anyway, those are the first projects in the new de newly designed shop. I'm having a little trouble with my English today. I'll see you all in the next one. Later. This one here, a nice place in Cruising 66. 66 was a good year. It was a good year.